Wow, I can't wait to become a member of this church. Hold on, you just can't join. We have to examine you. Okay, what would you like to know? Well, first of all, do you believe the gospel as it is taught in the Bible alone? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Do you believe this? No, but I believe something like it. What? What do you mean you believe something like it? Don't you know the mind of God and the mind of man do not coincide at any given point? Due to the incomprehensibility of God, man is only able to know analogically. He cannot possibly know any one thought that God knows, but he can only hope to know something like what God knows, an analogy. Therefore, I cannot say I know and believe God's gospel, but I must only say I believe an analogy of it. What do you think about the Bible? Do you believe that it is inerrant? Do you think the Bible has any contradictions in it? Well, since the mind of God and the mind of man cannot possibly coincide at any one given point, you must by now understand that man will run into what seems to be contradictions in all of his thought. Van Til says it best when he states, Now since God is not fully comprehensible to us, we are bound to come into what seems to be contradiction in all of our knowledge. Our knowledge is analogical and must be paradoxical. See Van Til's The Defense of the Faith, page 44. You are freaking me out. You sound like a neo-orthodox theologian. You know, Karl Barth taught the Bible was self-contradicting. Do you hold to his theology? Or, maybe you would rather agree with Gordon H. Clark, who said that there were absolutely no contradictions in the Bible. Gordon H. Clark said that what some people might first think are contradictions in the Bible can actually be harmonized with a bit of study. Thus, that which seems contradictory in the Bible can actually be proven not to be contradictory at all. Which position do you hold to? I hold to Van Til's position. Have you not read Van Til's book Tour de Reformed Apologetics? Oh and page 4 of that book, Van Til plainly states he disagrees with Gordon H. Clark. So, I do too. Wait a minute. Just a second ago, you said you believed man's knowledge is paradoxical or that it only seemed to be self-contradicting. I thought that would also apply to the Bible as well, but now you are implying the Bible is self-contradicting when you disagree with Gordon H. Clark. How can you justify this? To man the contradictions in the Bible are really contradictions, but to God they are somehow not contradictions. This sounds like pious nonsense. It is sickening. No, no, you have misunderstood my position. You are trying to use human logic. Don't try to figure it out, just believe. God is incomprehensible and mysterious. Any attempt at understanding the paradoxes of scripture only makes you a rationalist. I'm sorry, but we think the Bible alone is God's inerrant word. This means God, who cannot lie, can also not produce a revelation that contains the least bit of contradiction within it. After all, a lie is that which contradicts the truth. The Bible is completely consistent. This is also why it is profitable for instruction and doctrine see 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible commands us to be clear when we teach scriptures doctrines, see 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 6 through 11, and Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 2 through 8. But, if the Bible itself was self-contradicting, then it would be impossible to understand what was being taught teaching insultable paradoxical revelation would be pointless. We, as Presbyterians, have always believed that the Bible was logically consistent. Our confession refers to the perfect consistency of the Bible when it mentions the consent of all parts, see the Westminster Confession of Faith Chapter 1, Article 5. I think you are making God subject to logic. My master Cornelius Van Til said we should not be concerned with teaching God's word clearly, nor attempt to solve any of the paradoxes that we may find in scripture. See Cornelius Van Til's An Introduction to Systematic Theology, page 172. We do not make God subject to logic. Logic is the way God thinks. God is logical, not insane. If God did not think logically, then he would be the author of confusion. Also, logic is a necessary tool in the formulation and interpretation of doctrine. Our confession tells us that the whole counsel of God concerning all things necessary for his own glory, man's salvation, faith and life, is either expressly set down in scripture, or by good and necessary consequence may be deduced from scripture see the Westminster Confession of Faith, Chapter 1, Article 6. 
So, without deductive logic we could not formulate the biblical doctrine of the Trinity. Now I know you guys must be crazy. Did you know my master Van Til also says God is one person in three persons, not one God in three persons. See Van Til's An Introduction to Systematic Theology, pages 220 to 229. This heresy you believe in is known as functionalism. I'm sorry, but we cannot admit you into our Presbyterian Church with such views. Listen, we have a current controversy raging in Presbyterian churches today over justification by faith alone. Norman Shepard was dismissed from Westminster Seminary for teaching justification by faith and works. Did you know Cornelius Van Til publicly defended Norman Shepard, though Shepard held to the Catholic view of justification? Van Til's theology is simply not reformed. This current heresy, Federal Vision, was produced by men who hold strongly to Van Til's theology of paradox. We don't think this is a coincidence. Well, what should I do? Repent and believe the gospel. No, I will not repent. Hey, where are you going? Let me out of here. Come back. Hey, 